Oh, hello. Didn't see you there. This is D. Marks. Tom C. will be with us shortly. And this is, of course, the Sons of Video podcast. Thank you for joining us this week. This week on the podcast, Tom and I will be discussing... Oh, I didn't see you come in there. I already, I already did that part. Huh? Uh, this week on the podcast, Tom and I will be discussing uh, whether or not video games, which is our our top, our normal topic of discussion. I heard that the uh, the Spaniards call it vidya. Interesting. It's true. I heard that when I went to the Orient. Hmm. Fascinating. It's true. You'll have to regale me more of your tales later. I will not. I find them repulsive. It's the stories. Not the it's good to hear that you have such a worldly view of another culture. I can't story. believe that you said that it's I did that. Stories relating to them. I am repulsed by your opinion. Fascinating. Do you have any more brandy? I'm repulsed by it. Um, so please keep it away from me. I only have repulse, repulsal brand brandy. Mm, that's a repulsive name. Not interested. Thank you. You are quite welcome. That's a repulsive way to talk to anybody. Can we please continue? This week on the podcast, Tom Repulsive and I will be discussing... How dare you make a terrible repulsive joke at my name? You know my name. It's Tom Caspian. You are missing the fourth. Hmm? No. I am not the fourth or the third. I'm the sixteenth. Repulsive. How dare you use my word... We barely have a podcast today. If you're going to be this repulsive the whole time. Uh, it is repulsive that you even would say that. Repulsively get to the topic, please. The topic this week is the discussion of whether or not the medium known as video gaming can be considered... I hear the Spaniards call it vidya. Fascinating. It's true. You must tell me more of your... We're gambling with more of your stories later. No. Okay, I will, but not right now. Thank you. We are discussing whether or not the video game itself can be considered an art form. Now, Mr. Thomas C. and I have differing opinions on this matter. Tom will be taking the... Uh... Well, I think we should probably drop the accent soon. Yeah, it's probably time. Anyway, guys, um, because now we're actually into the topic. Here's the deal, guys. Um, I believe that they are not art, at least not in their current form. They are not art. I will be taking the opinion that uh, I have, I believe I have seen video games that can be considered art, and I believe that with even more uh, fine-tuning to the general idea of video games, they can be made into a, a truly magnificent, better form. Okay, I'm going to start off, even Please though do. you sort of just did. Please do. Did. Anyway, um, I think right now, especially right now, but for a while now, they've been... Made explicitly with the point of cashing in and making money. Now, you might be able to argue that a lot of art was made just for the point of making money, but that's kind of it's not the definition of art, you know? No, and, and you're, you're right on both regards. I mean, a lot of uh, art, well... Like how I crack my knuckles right into the mic? That's good. Next, you're going to be leaning back in your they chair. They need to know how talk. serious I am about my viewpoint. I'm willing to defend it. The fisticuffs. No, I I'm don't want, get the music back I don't in want when you I say to be fisticuffs. I'm starting a Donnybrook. No, <laughs> I'm gonna. Anyway, here's the deal. Uh, I know what I just said. Um, you got a lot of companies now that are just making money, and there are a lot of indie companies that are in it to make games that are great. Right. But for the most part, uh, you have games like Madden every year. You have games like Call of Duty, which comes out every year, which is just money makers. They're not art, but that's the majority of the game. Is just publishers trying to get money. So they'll do. They won't. Ask the, the developers to make a game that's really expressive of anything. They want to make a game that makes the most money. True, but I don't think that's a fair... I think that's an unfair generalization to the video game uh, industry as a whole. I think why you certainly can say that about a lot of things, like the perennial like sports games and stuff. Obviously, nobody's trying to make a sports game to make an artistic statement. That's not something... Sports is not art. I mean, that it's just... It, they're not compatible things. However, what I've... about like all those old paintings of like discus and wrestling and stuff? Yeah, but that's painting. That's not. Oh yeah, it's not. <laughs> yeah, you, you get what I'm saying. I think Gatorade would like me to believe that sports is an art. Well, Gatorade is not a sponsor, so you can't mention them on the podcast. Um, it's a different spelling of Gatorade. Fascinating. 
it's not really fascinating. The audience can't see me nod in dis- disapproval. Anyway, but the point of the, the point I'm making is that while you're right that a lot of manu- manufacturers, a lot of publishers, turn them out, whatnot, son. Exactly. Put them in the video game factory. A lot of publishers, while they are just trying to go for money grabs, especially in the cases of like the unwanted sequels, like Bioshock Two or something like that. I've, can you say that the original Bioshock was just a money grab? No, but it was. There's probably uh, there's probably some choices there that had to be made for a a money making reason. I don't think that that was ex- uh, just the expression of the developer's uh, like mind. I think there was probably a lot of things that had to be co opted or compromised in order to make it a, a game and not a piece of art. Well, I don't disagree, but what I'm saying is the fact that saying that. All are you saying that all games are only for the purpose of making money? No, which, that's not what I'm saying. That's that's way generalized, lolizing it on purpose. That was the point I thought you were trying to make. No, my point is that video games as an as a medium is for money making and not an art form. I can't say that every game is not art. That's not a valuable opinion. Oh well, is it? Because I I think that the 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 I don't know how to say what I'm trying. The what I said. The medium of video games is for money, not art. They are not, by definition, an art form. Yeah, that but, is exactly what I meant to say. Those other times when I was flabbergasted. Yeah, but do you consider do you consider movies an art form? Yeah. And how is that any different? Because movies are different, because they are uh, not an interactive experience, because they are very, very less often uh, messed with in their production. That's not true. Movies get messed with all the time. Yeah, move, there are plenty of crappy movies that are not made for the intention of being art. However, if you compare it to video games, there's about a million percent more video games that are effed with just to make money or get kids to get their parents' money than there is movies like that. I don't, I don't think that's true. I mean, especially, honestly, I think as Dude, we've been moving on, I think the movie industry has been making more cash grabs than honestly the well, game lately, industry Lately, yeah, has. that's true. Yeah, I mean that's but, that's, what, but primarily it's always been an artistic expression. I mean, if you're looking back to if you're looking back to compare the eight bit Mario with like Godfather two, you know, obviously they're not going to be able to compare. But even just looking within the past decade, I'd compare like a Bioshock to a uh, Journey to the Mysterious Island. These I, are not fair comparisons, I don't think. I don't see how they aren't because I'm talking because we're both talking about how the um, the financiers behind a project are deliberately messing with it in order to generate more product. Where in this case... Yeah, but I don't believe that Journey 2 had any interest in being an artistic expression. But that's the that's that's the exact point. I hate it when I prove your point by saying stuff. That's the exact... That happens all the time. It's the exact point. Movies nowadays, for the most part, by and large, are guilty of the same crime that you're saying that video games are. For the most part, they're simply only there to make a profit. Whereas the movies that truly excel and rise above are seen in the general consensus to be excellent works. And I think this is the exact same case with video games. See, this is why I chose this topic, listener. I'm looking at him while saying listener, and he's, yeah. not, he's not listening. But here's the deal. Because I wanted to prove to the listener that we're smart guys. Yeah, that was the whole uh, fr- front-end music part. Well, that's what we're normally like. We have to kind of dumb it down for this. I had to put on my best Michael Sarah impression, which I've just learned that I do sound like. Uh, I've gotten 3,000 emails. Were any of them for Michael Sarah? No, they were all saying, why is Michael Sarah taking Tom C.'s chair every week? We remember his voice. Where? Why is Michael Sarah in there? Mm. And then they'd say, why is he also there with Barry White Manilow? You should you should forward any of these emails, because I want to read them. We have the same email account. Yeah, I, I, I'm not reading them. That's... It's bigbutts at AOL.com. Mm. That's, that's what you should be sending the emails to. Don't send the emails. Anyway, we picked this topic because a lot of our topics recently have been less. Um, they've been more. They've been more about more obvious, I would say, and I think this one gives you more room to discuss and hear what why we're actually not retards. Yeah. Sorry to our retarded listeners. Have ask your handler to take your headphones off of you. You're you are offended. I mean, this is st- this, these are the sort of things that we discuss, and I think we should actually be getting back to the topic as opposed to explaining. It's my the- podcast. I'm paying the money. The audience can't be mad. They can be mad, you're right. Anyway, um, go on. Oh, wait, it's my point. Um, no, I just don't feel it's the same thing. And I know that you're saying, well, it should be. But to me, it doesn't feel like the same thing. Because some reason. 
Okay, well, what would... Okay. I need to be able to express myself in better than some reason here on the podcast. Yeah. What's going to give you more enjoyment? Or what would you say gave you the most enjoyment? Sitting through and playing your favorite video game of all time for the first time, or sitting through and watching your favorite movie of all time? Well, I hate movies. Everyone knows it. I know. That's why I'm sticking with this point really hard. Because you, through your own admission, don't like movies, and yet you see them as an art form. Whereas you, again, by your own self-admission, like video games, and that's something you don't see as an art form. And that's why I feel that's a topic that I can key on. I don't see how it's relevant. Oh, it's completely relevant here, because you're even though you don't like movies, you still respect them as an art form. Right. But since you like video games, you don't see them as an art form, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out why exactly that is. Okay, and I'm going to once again say that I don't believe that uh, video, game, uh, video game couldn't be artistic or have artistic merit or be... Do you believe that there are any video games currently released yes. that are that can be considered... I would say that the closest I've ever seen to a game being art for me was Dear Esther. Okay. Because that game is barely a game. It's more like a movie. Because all you do really is walk forward, but... Like, it, it is telling a story through it, and it's clearly the artist's vision for how he thought it would be. He imagined something, no one had any hands on it, he created a world, and then he did it. Did, what do you think is, a, is an art form thing like that? Oh, you mean like a game? No, I mean an art form thing like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't eat your snarky attitude, mister. <laughs> okay, it's hardly snarky when I'm making fun of myself. <laughs> Still snarky. Give me some examples of an art uh, game that is art. Okay, games that I would consider to be art. I would probably say Art Garfunkel's Crazy Adventure. Art Garfunkel Sing Along, the sequel, part two. For Xbox or PS2, they were very different games. Uh, well, I played the PC port. Hmm. I think that's an illegal port. Um, not that I'm aware of. I heard it was blockaded. Anyway, go on. That's funny. It's not funny. You can't just say stuff's funny and then not laugh at it. You're laughing already. I'm, I can laugh at my own jokes because I have no uh, problem doing Self-control. it. Self-control. That's true, too. Uh, let's see. Games that I would consider art. I would probably consider the, as much as it had its own flaws, I would probably consider the first Metal Gear Solid game, Metal Gear Solid, to be an artful game. Okay, tell me why. Well, because it had, it had a fairly in-depth and compelling story. You learned that it had a character arc. You had Solid Snake, who went from essentially like the, while being still relatively in the know, from being a, a more fresh-faced soldier who gets called out of retirement, and who follows through this path where he realizes that a lot of the things that he's been told along the way, and a lot of his even his own history, isn't isn't what it seems to be, and it's a journey of discovery for Solid Snake as a character, and that whole arc just within that first game is is an impressive feat of storytelling. I feel. Okay, maybe I should have asked for this earlier, but what? How do you define art? Uh, that's almost impossible. I, I it is I, not impossible. Defining art is like defining. It's like how do def- you define what? What is it then? How can you not have a definition for this word and tell me what is or it's is like not def- it? It's it's like defining happiness. You can't do that is it. Absolutely, it's not an emotion. It's a thing. But it's a it's a fluid, it's a concept. It's a fluid thing. It's like it's exactly like saying uh, ask me to define history. It's art. It's a thing. You can define it. Well, how would you define it? Uh, something that can express emotions through like a, a vis- visual or like tangible thing. Not necessarily tangible. Music's not tangible. I was about to say that. But uh, it, it makes more sense than, oh, I can't define it. It is a emotion expressed through the mediums that we have. Well, then how, does video ga- how do video games not f- qualify for that then? How does Madden 2002 emotion expressed through a video game? Again, like I said... I'm not talking about the Maddens. I'm not talking about the peripheral games like that. But even in Mo- even in uh, Call of Duty World at War, there was emotion there that between you and I actually playing the story mode, there were emotions in that game that we felt, that we were compelled to but feel. But that be- wasn't that, yeah, obviously there's emotion. And we could have emotion in a thing. They're like the worst uh, uh, straight-to-DVD kids releases that have emotion in it. Anyone could write emotion, but it's not the artist's expression of it. Like, anything could have uh, have an emotion. That doesn't... I'm ruining my own point. But anything can have emotion and not be, like, a realistic thing that's an art form expression of it. But, the, but uh, just look... Just look. There's, too many, uh, there's almost too many... Uh, uh, what is it? Chef soup stirrers in the soup pot. Oh, 
Too many cooks spoil the broth. Well, I like the stirring one. Too many chefs stir too fast on that pot, yo. It's a modern expression. It's close. I like it. I know. It's been around for years. But, like, even even in uh, World at War, even in the Stalingrad level, wasn't there... Didn't you get the just the depth yeah, and the soul-crushing but, gravity of that situation? But, yeah, of course. And, and so how's... And don't you feel that that had to do with the people who were making that level, particularly that level, don't you feel that that was their expression about how they might have felt during that time? Not e- I, I feel like it's maybe there, but I feel like mostly it's, well, this is pretty cool. The The critics might like this, or the, the gamers might think this is cool. I don't think they're being like, now we're going to really let everyone know the hardship that these Russians went through. Well, I, this is the problem. I'm not doing any research. We have no re- way or way to back it up, back it up one way or the other. You well, that's not the point. Because the point isn't whether or not this game or not was good. No. Any, any developer is going to say it's an art. They're going to say we made art here. They're not going to say that we used yeah, to make people want to buy it for money. Unless you're like Bobby Kotick or something. Yeah. But like, it, the video games started out as a thing to make money from kids. Well, I mean, originally video games started out, it's, they started out as a toy. Originally yeah. video games were a toy. So it's evolved from there, and there has been games with incredible stories and, like, incredible everything, but uh, the point of them was to make money, unless it's, like, an indie game now, which well, is why, still well, making money. Why can't something, why can't something, evol- why can't something evolve into an art form? Because uh, mm, I don't think it has yet. I'm not saying it could never be an art form. I'm saying right now... The main purpose and most often seen thing is for games to be just money grabs. Oh, well, I probably wouldn't disagree with you there. Oh. Well, there you go. <laughs> I, the, of course, you got indie people who are, they were raised on games. Well, and okay, all right. Well, well, well we can make this there. a point. I don't even think that you need to look, specifically look for indie game for indie developers t- for artful games. I don't think you need to go that far. I think there are mainstream games that are released... I mean, just look at just look at Bioshock Infinite. Just some of the stuff that's coming out. On it's the, a good atmosphere and it's amazing scenery. It doesn't mean it's art. But they're but they're tr- again they're trying to weave a story. They're trying to figure. They're trying to. I'm not even sure that story means art. Well, it it, it pretty much does in a movie sense. You practically, I mean, except for a few exceptions, for the most part, if a movie doesn't have a good story, it's not really going to be considered art. Even if it does have stunning visuals. Or a good score, or anything like that. If it doesn't have a good story, it really isn't going to be considered art. No, you're right. And I think that's why. I think that's one of the main reasons why my comparisons between movies and video games, both as art forms, is so important. I mean, especially literature, which you would consider literature art. I know I don't want to, but, but I'm you, gonna. You have to, and that's nothing but story, except for you know, again, a few cases where imagery is especially potent. I don't, but that, it's maybe, crucial to have a good story. Maybe and you're like right. That. Maybe just. Maybe because even with paintings, it's the story you're imagining in your head. I think one of the reasons why you have such... I think one of the reasons it's why... It's because I'm totally... I have a terribly small worldview, and I have no concept of anything. Well, no, I Is think... Is that the point you're going to make? Because I'm making it right now. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> if you're uh, in ignoramus, and you don't know what's going on, you're some kind of maroon, then yeah. Well... We talked about this before, and I think this is one of the main reasons. Hold on, sorry. Wouldn't it be funny if we, I was just trying to say, like, this games are an art point, and then, like, purposely trying to be an idiot? And like I was trying, we were trying to get across that people don't think art or games are art or like stupid. So I'm pretending to be like a dumb guy who's that's, siding. That's with not it. what we're doing. It should be that. That'd be so smart of us. <laughs> Too bad we're not that high, bro. The point I'm trying to make is that I think one of the reasons why you have a why you have a, such a uh, distaste for the idea of of video games being art, but you can consider um, books, paintings, music. Movies you can consider, consider those things to be art is because you can visually or auditorily identify all the players. Whereas in video games, one of the most important cruxes of the entire uh, saga of a video game is you. Right. I mean, if you're pl- let's, let's. I think maybe the interactivity is an issue. I think if let's take New Vegas. Hmm. I wouldn't consider that art. But in this particular case, this is this is the kind of point I'm trying to make. Oh. In New Vegas, while you and I create characters, we also create backstories for those characters. Very we, often, yes. We create reasons why those characters are performing those actions. What they're doing, why they're doing them, who they are as people. And we are doing that. We are internalizing that. And right. it's going to be different for every other single person who ever plays Fallout New Vegas. So maybe 
No, I know I'm going to interrupt you. So maybe it's more like video games are a canvas for art. Yeah, that's what I kind of think. And that's mm-hmm. what, that's where I was kind of going with that last part, is the fact that since you, since the player is the most crucial part of a game, and who and the avatar that the player is playing through is the most important part of a game, if that character is made to be strong, or oppositely, oppositely, uh, uh, on the other hand, ca- that character is made to be almost non-existent, like in games like A Shadow of the Colossus. You, I would consider that an artful game. That had no speaking in it. It had a very good story. It had excellent execution. You knew what was going on, even though for the most part, no words were being spoken. Yeah, but and, every year they release a new one. You got like, Shadow of the Colossus 2007. Yeah, that's Shadow true. Shadow of the Colossus 2008, just different roster. Who needs it, man? But what a ma- money grab that game was. But in the game, Shadow of the Colossus, the character, the main character... What, 2008, 2006, 93? The character Wander is practically non-important. It's not important who Wander is so much as the world around Wander and what he's doing. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's more art is happening to you. You have to experience. You have to let yourself be open to the world in front of you and how to interact with it and how to make the vision of the developers and the publishers. You have to make that vision and go with it and identify with it. Okay. I'm still... I, I kind of see what you're saying a lot more now. Because in a movie, in a movie like, like The Godfather, where you have the main character, Michael Corleone, everything that's important in that story happens in and around... Michael Corleone and his and the crime fa- and the Corleone crime family. Right. Whereas if you had the Godfather game, which I've heard is pretty bad, but I haven't played it personally. But if if the Godfather was originally a game and it was just as good, just as artistic, and you were playing as Michael, that character would still be just as important, and you playing that character would bring you even closer to that story because it's not the decisions that Michael is making; it's the decisions that you, as Michael, are making as a player. And therefore, it's you that is driving the story as opposed to a character, uh, Al Pacino, on the screen doing it. But what does that have to do with art? I'm saying that's what... I'm saying the reason... The interaction is what was holding you back from kind of considering it to be art form. And I'm saying that through the Avatar and the PC, that's the centralized character. And that's why you have to be able to identify with that. Okay, but I still don't understand why... I don't understand your point. My point, it wasn't a point for whether or not it's art. It was just a point of the reason why you may not consider it to be art. Because you have, pro- you can't identify with the most, because you can't identify with the most important character in a video game. Oh, okay. Because maybe I'm not feeling the same things that ideally that character should be feeling in that situation. No, 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 that's not even the point. Oh. The point is that, <laughs> like, if you're watching an opera, an right. opera is going to lose a lot if the main character isn't there. Probably? I don't know. I'm not an opera guy. Okay. Yes, that would be the case. Like, a Carmen without a Carmen would be a lot less of a show. Hmm. But, in the case of a video game, it's not that Carmen isn't there. It's that you are Carmen. Okay. So they... Okay. Okay. Okay, you get what I'm saying now? My mouth suddenly tastes like a dentist just been in there. Is that art? Little do people know, I've hypnotized Tom... <laughs> To taste a sterile taste in his mouth whenever I Ugh. mention Carmen, the it's that, opera. It's that taste like when they drill in there, you know, and you got some like teeth bits still in, but like still like the smoke from the friction. Ugh. That sounds very unpleasant. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, um, I feel like I've not defended my side at all. And I, I want to, I wanted it to well, be. Well, we'll make, wait, make some points. I've been doing a lot of talking here. Wait, make some, make some points for, I don't for know that I side. can now that you made it made sense for me. But I feel like the listener's going to think this is a one-sided wank-off, you know? Well, I mean, I kind of was preparing all week for this. I wasn't preparing at all, and that's my problem. But I'm going to stick with my guns here and say that right now it is not. And I think that's the fairest, most faucetative of views because... You get it? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, just not, it's just not there yet. Are there any... Ma- are there any uh, let me ask you this. Are there any games put out by a major publisher that you would consider art? No, probably not. Okay. I, I've i loved games, and I've loved worlds created by games, and I've loved all the stuff in games, but they just don't come off as artistic expressions more than stories. And I feel like the feel like I, I didn't feel before to, right now that story was the main point of art. But now that I'm thinking more about it, 
and what you just said, I think I kind of get it more. I think I, I don't know if that's the way everyone feels. That's the way I feel when it comes to the argument, at least. Because I, I, I think I think you can find beauty wherever you look. I, I do honestly think that. And I think, don't think video games are any exception to that. Yes, I will dare, certainly grant you that the vast majority of games, even big, like big releases, yes, they are for making a profit. They are to keep people in business. They are to be, keep people having jobs. But I don't think that you can't have art that cannot also accomplish that goal. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Okay, and that's probably something more that I have that I'm worried about is that maybe I guess I don't consider commercial endeavors artistic and because of what they are. Yeah. I think that's probably unfair to everyone involved and it's probably unfair to the process. And I know, don't get me wrong. I know all these games take a lot of hard work to make. I'm sure that the, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong the whole way around. Maybe this is just a form of art that's been able to make a lot of money and be sold on just artistic principle alone. It's possible. Because maybe it's just the developers are in there and like, this is what people would like to play because it's artistic. Because it's not like they're making the same exact crap. It's not like everyone's making Call of Duty. Yeah. Just those four other companies who aren't as smart as Activision. Here's Medal of Honor. Here's that other thing. I mean, something else. I mean, if you look back to the early... Because there is a lot of originality. I'm going to cut you off every time. Okay, good. Because there is a lot of originality. That's how debates work. Yeah. Well, there's no mediator, so you can suck it. I'm going to get real into it and just, like, get mad at you. But no. Yeah, you're, well, it was a bad choice making your guy the mediator because he can't talk. He can't even think about it. But the issue is, n- now that I'm thinking... There's a lot of originality in uh, video games. There's a lot of different... There's... A lot of ideas. And the thing about... It's very, like in movies, you have stuff copying off stuff all the time. The thing about video games, and I think what's really important here, is that there are some stories that really can only be told through video games. Yeah, that, that I would agree with. I would. I think Dear Esther is like that. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think too many people would really... I don't think too many people would really be interested in like a Bioshock movie. I don't think that would do very well. I don't it could think... maybe do well as a horror movie, but then it wouldn't be as artful as it is. Yeah, I think. I think the fact that... The way Bioshock is presented, the way how I don't even know if I consider that art. I feel because it's it's just it's no. I'm great... not saying for I'm not saying for I'm not saying for the purposes of art. I'm simply saying for it's a story that can only be told through a video game medium, yeah. as opposed to a movie, a TV show, a book, an opera, what have you. Right. That's that's my point. There are some stories that can only be told through video games, and some of those stories are artistic. Yeah, I guess. The, one I, the point I was going to make earlier is that I see a lot of kind of uh, similarities between the early days of cin- between cinema in general and the video game industry. I mean, if you look at the early days of cinema and how much that technology progressed just within the three decades of its existence, from cinema, the, yeah, from the well, ni- cinema has been since nineteen twenties. What? Said cinema's been around for more than thirty years. No, but I, what I'm talking about. Was I not listening to something? <laughs> uh, the first three decades of cinema. Oh, okay. How much technological advancements occurred just in cinema between colorization, sound? The, they the invented the telephone. Implement of sound. Well, it was actually before that. They invented the car. The, the hot dog is, roller. All the implement inventions. of things like sound, color, um, uh, technical, all that stuff. I think there's a lot of analogies between that kind of very quick, rapid advancement and the kind of advancement that video games have just had within the past 30 years. I mean, just look at a game from 1982, compare that to a game, yeah, any right. game now, and it's vastly different. It's the same thing with movies. I think people who are, I think the people who look back to video games, who have been around, who are old hands at the sport, so it's sport, quote unquote, <laughs> who have been around since the very beginning, they're going to be a lot like those people who were, who are still stuck in the who were still stuck in the talkies stage or the silent film era of of film of cinema. Okay. And I think it's that same kind of thing and I think they're just kind of, you know, they're not willing to embrace that mo- video gaming is just moving so fast as as a technology that they just aren't really taking the time to look to see where it's going. Okay, pretend you're me for a second. Okay. Put yourself in my Hey everybody, I'm Tom Z. Okay, you're gonna you have to answer a question like that if you're gonna if that's okay, your whatever. So here's the deal. I don't say whatever. I've never said that in my life. You just did. Mm. Anyway, so my question to me. Okay. I'm not gonna do my impression of you because it sounds exactly like me. Is if video games took less people to make, 
would I be more likely to think of it as art? Like, if one person could just go and make a game, like, right now. Like, if, imagine if I felt something, you, I meaning I, which means you, which means I. I get, I get what you're saying. I get the would, question. And I had a feeling or an emotion, and I could express it through an, a video game because I could make it by myself. It, would, it still looked great, and it didn't have to worry about graphical restrictions or anything like that. If I could go and express myself through that medium, just me, would I consider that art? Go me. Uh, let's see. Because maybe that's my problem, is that I think there's too many chefs in the stew. I could definitely see your point. I think you probably might think it was art. Because cause I think the point that you key in on a lot about how indie gamers mostly, I think that also has a lot to do with the I think fact it does that too. Indie gamers are a smaller operation. And, some of, and there are... And there's in- less, less time, less people to screw it up. Yeah. And commercialize it. I think I'm probably right. I can't believe we got 30 minutes out of this crap. We did a good job. I still don't believe it. Guys, video gamers, video gamers, we can't go on anymore with this. We've reached the time limit. We did a good job. I we There's still millions of things we could be talking about. We could have a political discussion. We could be the NPR video games. But Hi, Hi welcome back to Sons of Video. We, we, we could do that. But the issue is... We got to take a break, and you know we do. Yeah, dude. You guys love it. Here's what you should do, though. Uh, there's probably views you don't agree with from me and him. Email us about it. Yeah, let us know. Tell us your stupid opinion, idiot. You dummy. <laughs> Man, you're dumb. I but can't believe you. Tell us about it. Sons of video at gmail.com. Do it, guys. Do you have a keyboard on your computer? Then tell us about it. I Tell her about it. I forget who that's by. Yeah, I, I was going to I was gonna mock you, but now I like that song. You really made me like it. But no, um, let us know, because maybe we're wrong. Maybe I'm right, and you're mad that I wasn't able to do it. Against this guy's massive wordsfulness. Thank you. He's a speech crafter. A wordsmith. Master speech crafter. I'm sorry, guys, but we're going to take a break. See you in a second. We're back. Look at this. Hey, everybody. We are back. We're on the line. I can see. Oh, no. Look at those wavelengths. Guys. You can't see the wavelengths, but it's all there. Guys, the audio is looking great. I'm worried we might be louder than last week or any of the previous weeks. Well, the key is I took a lot of LSD before this podcast, so I can see That is not a performance all of our sounds. Okay. Well, oh, I, don't need, I don't need drugs to get me through the dare to look at computers instead of doing drugs, man. Anyway, there's normally something we do here, and I'm trying to remember it. Don't remind me. I'm going to get it. There's, what do we... Tom? No, Tom? don't even remind me. I'm going to get it. I don't need your help, all right? But I wish there was something that could help me. Tom, on the off chance that you might want a little bit of help with your problem right now, it sounds what, like... ED? They no. don't know about that. Not knowing what what to do with the podcast. Oh. It sounds well, like uh, you need the official need Sons of Video. Stop <laughs> saying video. Video. <laughs> Sons of Video podcast by numbers system. I don't know what that is. And it sounds terrible. Tom, is it me, a microwave? Tom, let me tell you what it is. Is it a microwave? It's not a microwave. Tom, let me tell you what it is. That's what I really need right now, though. I got this burrito and it's not cooking itself. So, you send... Us some money, a low, low introductory price. And we Do we will take money straight to your house, or you can purchase it at one of our thousands upon thousands of Sons of Video official podcast by number system kiosks in thousands of malls all across the world. And we will send it straight to you, the official Sons of Video podcast by number system. But I don't know what that is. The system comes complete. With but does every- it, the system work? Oh, it works fine. And let me tell you what. The, let me tell you what this, what happens. I wish you system. would. I really don't know what it is. All right. So, let me just open up the box here. Why don't you have it unboxed for this? It's a commercial. Commercial box? No, we're doing a commercial about the thing. All right. So, as you can see here, it comes with several thousands of sheets of numbered paper and a single CD. 
A single CD? A single CD. A CD of singles from today or from like before? A single CD. A singular CD. One CD. Oh, okay. Now what I'm you do still, is, I still don't know what this is. So what you do is, you throw your box away. Hmm. You put your CD in the CD-ROM drive, and you load it up on your computers. Hit, hit the keyboards. Ah. Uh, all right. Uh, click, click the, click. All okay. right, now it's loaded up. Click. Now you see all the, all, the, all the programs listed from one. Should I still be typing? To infi- no. Oh. All right, now all right. just take a look at the piece of paper here. You see all the numbers there? There's the, a thousand of them. Which one? The, we're just taking the one right off the top. Okay, sorry. You see how it's numbered? All you have to do is find a theme that you like. We're going, this, this, this podcast is going to be Bad Games. Bad Games podcast. That's going to be episode, what, 150? Something like that. And all you do is you look at the sheet and just play the sound bit off of the CD that corresponds with the number on the page. Okay, I admit I'm a little confused. Could I see an example? All right, Tom. Most of these start out with the number one. And one represents opening by Tom, by the, the opening by Tom C. sound effect. Hit that one. Okay, hold on. I'm pressing one. One. Hey, everybody, it's Sons of Vidya. It's like you're really in the room. I don't remember saying that, guys. Prompting a podcast. I don't, I don't recall that happening one bit. We followed that up. How do we have one from future episodes? Only the magic of the official Sons of Vidya podcast by number system. I can't believe it is butter, too. Follow that up with a number six, the D Marks says hello. Hit it. Uh, six. Hello. See? I, I thought it couldn't be done. But here we are. You know, I, I'm looking through some of these cards. You can... Tom, I don't know why I'm not looking through them, but I'm going to look through them. And I see a couple that I like and I want to hear. Tom, as you can see... I know this podcast needs a little more something. Well, Tom, what, 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 do, you, what do you think it needs a little more of? Because I can tell you what number it goes right along with. Uh, well, I'm seeing... I like 66 a lot. Tom, 66 is a great choice. 66 is a Tom speaks too loud that he accidentally pops the microphone. Do we have that? I think I've never done that. Uh, you're, you're about to be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> 66, hit it. <laughs> that was pretty good, right? You totally popped the microphone. Are you looking at the charts right now? That really adds a lot. Um, but I feel like what I really meant to say was 67, which is D Marks says the word pumpernickel four times. Tom? Let's listen to that sound effect. 67. Pumpernickel, 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 pumpernickel. That was a great episode. Yeah. We all remember. Episode 31 October, the Halloween episode. Yeah. Well, we're technically going to have four in October, aren't we? Well, yeah. This is a weekly thing. It's well, not, yeah. It's a Halloween week. Yeah, it's a Halloween week. Well, these are all great. Tom, but I don't think I've gotten enough in the examples. All right, Tom. Uh, and we're going to play one of my personal favorites. Number 42. Tom loses his train of thought and no, stops knowing what he's talking about. Let's listen to that one. We could listen to that from today's episode. Why don't you cue it up? All right. Nah, here we go. 42, hit it. So, like, what I'm saying is, I don't really understand why you'd even think is... the th- Like, it just doesn't... It doesn't really... I don't know. Tom, isn't that a great clip? I remember that from the future. Tom, each one of these patented systems comes with over two dozen different sound effects to make each podcast more unique than the last. I don't I don't remember most of these, though. I don't... This one is... I don't think they need any more examples, but let's give them a few more. I don't recall D. Mark saying pterodactyl, but emphasizing the P. That seems like a weird one. That's number 105. Which one is that again? 105. I'm clicking it right now. All right, hold on. Let me, let me cue that up oh, on Oh, you're clicking system. it? Yeah, sorry. We have two computers here, guys. All right, 105, Pterodactyl. I don't remember that. Tom. What episode? Why would we do? I just can't. We all, we both know that comedy is not just funny sounding words. No, it's not. It's saying regular words in a funny voice. Like this <laughs> yeah. classic. I knew that. Number 88. 88? Tom, number 88. Huh. Tom saying he's going to the barrel store. Like an 1840s prospector. Let's load that up in the computer wait, right wait, wait, now. Wait, wait, wait. Which number is that? I got this on my system. It's number 88. 88? 88. 88. Didn't we do 88 already? Uh, no, we did 77. Oh, you're right. Uh, 88. 
Tom goes to the barrel. Tom says, "I'm going to the barrel store as a grizzled 1840s prospector." Okay, why don't you cue it up? Why don't you cue it up? Okay, 88, go. I'm going to the barrel store, hombres. Tom, I don't remember that one either. Tom, there are literally minutes of quality content. How is there only minutes? There's thousands of things. They're very short clips. I don't see how that's hard. It only lasts for minutes? We couldn't even say... It's not even more than one hour. Well, it probably is more than one hour. We're really trying to... I don't know. How much does this system cost? Tom... Maybe if we consulted clip number 97, in which it says how much the thing costs, which we say in a future episode. It's, it's really weird that we have a clip exactly for this, but... It, me... It's D. Marks saying the number that comes after 150. And then the number cents. I don't... Right. Well, uh, is that on your system or mine? It's on my system, but I've forgotten the number, so we're going to do a different it's one. It's 150. Wait, is it 150? It was 150. No, I think that was the number you say. Well, it's also 150, I guess, so here we go. 151.3 cents. Pretty good, right? I don't remember that happening. Tom, it's like I'm in the room right now with you telling you how much it costs. But it it only costs a dollar and fifty cents point three. Cents? No, it costs a hundred times that. It's one hundred fifty-one dollars. Oh, um, the low, low price of one hundred fifty-one dollars. Do we have some co- kind of uh, like plan? Uh, yes. No, I'm right. telling. I'm telling them we do. It's if you can't pay for it all right now, you can pay for the actual amount for six months straight. Make one payment. $151 every six month for times. six months. And maybe then you'll be able to have it. Yes. But not a minute before. We no. will not send you until you pay all of the 150 payments. You will not get your baby back. What are you going to do? You're going to sit there and you're going to listen to another lackluster Savop podcast. Or... I didn't need to say podcast because I said Savop. Or you can get the official Sons of Video podcast by numbers system it's patented it works i know i'm use it i'm d marks i fully endorse this product i don't i'm not sure about it yet i think i need one more clip at least one more tom that's fair what's what's your fancy i want you to click on uh i think i don't know what episode it's from but it's number 212 it's tom shaving his beard on the microphone all right let me just load that up into our system 112 Tom shaving beard and go. Ooh, ooh, ah, oh, my face. And there are many, many more classics. I'm gonna buy it just for that last one. I need to make it my ringtone, and I don't have it. How do I not have it? Who made this? You can't actually make it a ringtone. That that would be illegal. What? Sorry. Do we have that copy written? Uh, Is that on my T-shirt? Uh, maybe. It's a good t-shirt though, guys. Guys, just get off just get off the computer. Get off the computer. And go to your phones. Your mom wants to use it. She's got bills. It's tax season. Call up 1-855-237-68542. Sons of Vidya.52 Klondike 2. And say that you want the official Sons of Video official podcast by numbers official system. Except no imitations. Also, you have to give them your credit card number. I know that seems weird. But you have to do it, guys. Because I would like to have it. Also, you guys are rich. Also, we do not pay the staggeringly large shipping fees. No. <laughs> we sure don't. Uh, it's staggering. Uh, but if you get it in the kiosk, you will still have to pay that fee. Well, yeah, because we have to ship it to the kiosk. Yeah, and that's all on you guys. It's yeah. all on you. So buy it today. Buy it today. You will not regret it. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, though, and you've probably already listened to a far better podcast than this one, because you made it yourself, guys. You, you did it. Idiots. You, you can do you it. You don't at have home. to deal with you our crap anymore. You can do it at anymore. home now. You don't have to deal with our We're going to go into a kind of related segment to the first one. Yeah. Kind of in a dumb way. What do you mean dumb? It works totally fine. Boy, I regret ever agreeing to this this is an embarrassment it's things that should be having the games or things that be having the games and should not be yeah i'm gonna need you to give me some examples right off the bat all right well when we talked about this segment before especially the part about the games that 
are made to be like times with like movies and stuff, that's a real sticking point for me because a lot of things that they make, a lot of games that they make off of movies just don't need to be made. I mean, I didn't need to see the Adventures of Tintin game. I certainly didn't need to see the Avatar game. I mean, what's next? It's the not har- like we're playing these games, but they do exist for BS reasons. Yeah, it's stupid. It's just try. It's just more uh, commercialist tripe. I don't need the Hunger Games games. I don't need the Hunger Games. Period. But I also I true. don't need. I don't need them to make a game about it because I don't. I don't think that's interesting. I can think of one thing that deserves a game that doesn't. Sons of Idia. Uh, we can't discuss that right now. Oh right, but it it deserves one. You know what else deserves one? Bowling with a human skull. How come that doesn't have one yet? Uh, I think because it's not an Olympic sport. Oh, yeah. They don't have any games that aren't Olympics. Anyway. But, I mean, games like that that just don't need to be made. Uh, I was thinking as far as things that do deserve games or maybe reboots. One thing that came to mind to me is uh, Cowboy Bebop. And I know a lot of people would think... First of all, there already is, I think there's one or two games that were... I think there might be one for the Dreamcast, I think there's one for the PS1. Yeah, I think there were a couple games that were... But nothing really worth even noting. Yeah. I don't even think they came out in America. No, they didn't. They never imported them. That's probably an issue. But here's the thing. And this is what I was thinking of. I'm worried we're going to look like real anime nerds. We play video games. It's not in the same market. It sort of is, which is, uh, I guess, alright. The moral of the story is, this is a game where I honestly could really kind of see an MMO going with. I feel like that, but... uh, I don't know about that because you could see a lot of any kind of anime universe games, and then but I think live in that world with an MMO thing. But I think Cowboy Bebop has a really good world for it. I think it has it already kind of has a built in faction system. It already has it already has plenty to do. You could set up bounties to work on. You could work with That's other true. players. I think it'd be re- I think it would be a really solid setup for something like that. Seems like a pretty obvious idea. And uh, and don't get me wrong, I'm happy they didn't like you know cash in with it and trying to. I would rather see it not be a game, but it, compared to some of the stuff that is out there that has games going along with it, Cowboy Bebop is a much better choice. Yeah, wait, no, I'm going to go back to things that shouldn't have games. I'm going to cut you off even though you're making a great point. Okay. I don't want to spend too much time on your crap. Wasn't there a Quidditch game? I think they released one for an actual system, like Harry Potter. Probably. That's stupid, guys. What are you people, insane? Dude, people could play Quidditch in real life. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You can't even fly on a broom pole. I think they do like the action horse thing um i'm gonna need you to explain the action horse the action horse it's like that it's like a broomstick except it's got a horse head on the end that's awesome you ever seen that before no it's like one of those uh, things kids have yeah, yeah i think that's called an action horse i don't think it is called that i've never heard that before in my life maybe anyway that's stupid too I, i'm just saying people do it there's plenty of games that deserve to exist and there's a lot that shouldn't exist and are clearly just cash and that's one of them yeah i mean yeah well the whole a whole idea of the harry potter games Harry Potter doesn't need a game. I think it's... It could, you're right, because there's a lot of crappy tie-in games for Harry Potter, now that you say it. Yeah, and I think Harry Potter is a stand Harry Potter, as, just as a franchise, is really solid. It's a good franchise, but I don't, think it, I don't think it needs that. I mean, like, half of those Lego games don't need to be made. Oh, that's true. Like Lego, Lego Harry Star Potter, Wars. Lego Star Wars, Lego Indiana Jones. People are all like, that they're good games. F off. Grow up. Yeah, I mean, did we... Stop re- being an idiot. I mean, I was. Eh, it's it's just stuff that doesn't need to be ha- happen, and it really kind of detra- It really detracts the whole idea of games be taken as an art form, where they do these quick commercial cash-ins with with games like that. Like, what's the point? So you can do an Indiana Jones game, except now you have some Lego jokes thrown in. Like, oh, his hand came off, or his head's a thing, or he got stuck to the ground. No, look at short rounds made out of Legos. What are you kidding? Are you, what? Just grow up. Not everything needs to be a game. No. I think that's a lot, I think that's something that people don't understand, is that not everything does need to be a game. Which I know is kind of maybe closed-minded of me, but shut up. I don't care. Not every book needs a movie. Boy! That is a controversial and accurate uh, opinion. Oh, well, it, I think it definitely relates here. It most certainly relates. Thank you. If I say it mad, do you think I'm arguing with you? Yes. Boy, you're so right! God! You're a real jerk sometimes. What a weird opinion. It's so smart. You really nailed it, guys. Jeez. I feel like I'm not addressing the audience enough this podcast. Ah. I want to let them know they're in the podcast. That's nice of you. Ugh. I don't know. Anyway, there's a plenty of stuff like that. We don't actually have that much time to do it. No, unfortunately, we're, we got to cut this. We went way over. We went over with this, too. Really? We went way over in the first segment. We're already at 17 minutes here. Oh, jeez. Yeah, we got to start cutting it. Cutting it S. We, we had, like, last week's was, like, 200... 
straight days of well, podcasting. Yeah, we're, we're approaching our uh, 50th millennium of podcasting. So we're going to cut that segment drastically short. Suffice it to say. Suffice it to say. We nailed it. Also, yeah. Uh, we don't need any more Batman games, too. What? Did I just say that? Jeez. I don't mean it. I, I wanted to think of something really like that everyone likes that I could get rid of real quick. Anyway, no. Uh, but we're going to go into another thing right now. Yeah. I'm doing it like a kid again. And here's our next segment. Next topic. Dude, I should have like a Rocky and Bullwinkle style. And here's something you'll really like. Gee, Rocky. Anyway. Um, we're going yeah. into the podcast. <laughs> it's not good. You should do your Barney Rubble at some point, though. <laughs> I wonder if that translates to the recording. Anyway, here's the deal. Guys, email in. Guys, email in. We still don't have any contests, and we're still giving away stuff. Guys, even if you listen to this contest, I mean, email in request, like, 40 weeks later. You are we. You see us, we're releasing episode 45. Uh, email us. If I like it enough, I might still give you stuff. Be like, guys, you really nailed episode 4, and we'll be like, this guy listened to episode 4. And you know what? I'll give you something. Give us your names, your Steam name. We're wealthy... Your- business tycoons you think podcasts are a no money deal we're dying and we don't have children listen i got money i'm sleeping on money i'm eating on money pooping on money pool full of money dude we're like rappers i was gonna say we're like scrooge mcduck dude i read that scrooge mcduck is the richest fictional character yeah i think that's true no he is he's like richer than like those other ones that are like guys anyway just do it guys just email us. Email in sonsofvidya at gmail.com. Do you not know how to spell vidya? Do it. It's vidya. Like V I D Y A. Do you not know how to spell sons? It's like your son, not That's like n- the son. Tom, just as a callback, that's number 15 on the Sons of Vidya podcast by number system. What Tom is? spells the word vidya. It, yeah. Uh, what did I say? What? Why don't you just dial it up? All right. Yeah. Let's do it again. Here it goes. Number 15 and go. Y A V I D, flip it around, y'all. I don't remember saying that. That's either. a classic one, though. I don't think I ever said that. More classic. Anyway, just do it. You know how to spell sons. You know how to spell of. You know how to spell vidya. Now that I taught you twice, and you know how to spell Gmail because it's obvious. And guys, you got to put an at there too, though. Guys, it's one button. Since we spelled the email address eighty billion different times, you know what that means. It's time to email it. No, I was gonna say it's time for speed of I don't know where this list is from. Uh, this is... I just found this on the internet. What? You didn't f- I thought you found it somewhere. Well, I found it on... It was some Ask Yahoo thing. A highly esteemed Ask Yahoo list of some games. Tom, you gotta remember what these games are. Right. Tom, here it comes. All okay. Right, we're gonna start you off. Mass Effect 3, go. Mass Effect 3, um, this is a game you have already played. 10 out of 10. Elder Scrolls 5, Skyrim. Uh, I tried using these scrolls, but they were just too old. They all kind of crinkled in the dust. Uh, 5 out of 10. Batman Arkham City. Batman always has lived in this city, and he's tired of it. He's like Gran Torino, except I didn't make the joke. Four out of ten. Kingdoms of Al Malar, Reckoning. I love Malamars. I think they are delicious. Seven out of ten. Deus, de, 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 deus ex human revolution. It's a speed review thing, dude. <laughs> Sorry, I can't read it. Uh, deus ex human... Re- Number five. Um, deus ex... You Come on, feed review. Revolution is uh, you're in you're Russian and you're revolting against humans who are known for their ex deuces. It's some sort of machine gun thing. I don't know, man. They're making games too complicated. It's got a ten out of ten. Dragon Age Two. My dragon is two years old. I'm so happy. Look at look at the little scamp. Oh, this is the happiest day of my life. 10 out of 10. Portal 2. Portal 2 is the sequel to Portal 1. So it gets 2 out of 10. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. 8 out of 10. Saints Row the 3rd. Saints Row the 3rd is the third version of Saints Row the 3rd, so it's the ninth one. And there's three more coming after that, so 12 out of 10. Gray Matter? This is honestly, a, like in all serious folks, I've never heard of this game before. I don't before. know what this is. I, I don't want to give it a rating. So I'll it gets it. a 10 out of 10. Yeah, great rating. We did it! We did it! That's we'll see it. you guys next week! That's it! Email us. Stop not emailing us. Thanks, everybody. We like your stuff.